So today we're going to be painting this beautiful snowy landscape uh, painting and um, it's for absolute beginners completely if you're if you're new to painting this is definitely the tutorial for you and um, there's certain areas I even go wrong myself so I do um I, I do apologize but yeah this is a perfect painting for a complete beginner we use one color so we use the thalo blue and Windsor and Newton white gouache so that's all we're using so it's really simple you need limited supplies hope you hope you enjoy the video please let me know in the comments hey there so today we're going to be doing a very very simple watercolor painting we're only going to be using one color that color is going to be thalo blue which is a very very intense watercolor it's, a, it's what they call a staining color which means that it's actually very very difficult to lift that it'll always leave a part on the paper it will always leave pigment on the paper because it would have stained it with some colors you can actually once they've once you put them on you can lift them off using a damp watercolor brush so I'm just going and pre-wetting the paper just put in making sure all make sure there's a clear coverage over all of the paper today we're going to be using arches 100% cotton watercolor paper cold press cold press is the best for landscapes so if we go over here now over to the palette I'm just picking up some of the thalo blue as you can see it's a very very intense color we don't need a huge amount of it for this painting so what we're going to paint so monochromatic um snowy scene so we're just going to be using thalo blue as said previously well if you can hear pitter patter that's my dog going to investigate a noise outside <laughs> so like I said, we're going to be, it's going to be a very snowy scene, which is going to be quite abstract with a bit of, with a, a tiny bits of details in. We're going to mainly be using the wet on wet technique. Once we've got our painting down and it's dried, we're then going to go in with some designer white gouache, which is from Windsor and Newton. Okay, so let's go in and put some painting in. So what we're going to say is we've got a hill coming here and we can just see some trees coming down and maybe we've got one coming up this side as well so we're going to let that pigment kind of just spread out and really really blend into the into the paper put some little bits here maybe some just dab your brush have it in a, a vertical to the paper okay we're gonna get very very weak oh there goes my dog gonna put just some that's a little bit much take some of that oh, there's a baby crying outside my dog is going mental sorry pops actually I don't believe that's really working that well so we'll go down we'll drag that pigment down so it looks a bit like the sky and then what we'll do is get a little bit of cotton wool ball, tiny little cotton wool ball. We'll just go up and lift some of that off. Not much. It just gives the impression of some clouds. So this first layer now, we're going to let dry. 
We're going to let this dry and then we're going to go back in. We're going to re-wet the paper and add a bit more in. Okay, so our first layer is dry. So what we're going to do now is go in with a bit more water. Let's get this brush off. We're going to add a bit more A lot more water again re-wet the paper as you can see it's not completely white but that will serve as when we go to add in some highlights so make sure your paper is all wet because what we don't want is, at the moment is any harsh edges so if we've got completely wet paper we won't have any harsh edges Everything will blend and look beautiful. And that's what we want at this stage. So as you can probably tell, our painting at the moment looks a little bit like a hot mess, is what's called <laughs> at this stage, because it doesn't quite look like anything, but I promise you this will turn into something amazing. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just picking up a little bit of this colour and then I want to water it down quite a bit. So you do that in watercolour by adding water. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do what we did previously. Only this time I'm going to, I'll just add a bit more because it's more. A little bit. I'm going to do what we did previously. So I really want this to fade out and to spread out. So it really looks like it's in the distance. There we go. Okay. So again, we're going to wait. Oh, I picked up a bit of green there, apologies. That's what happens when you don't clean your palette properly. Bad habits. That off. There we go. Let's go on. So. Again, we're just oh, putting in parallel dots onto the paper. There we go. Right, again, we're going to let this layer now dry. Okay, so that layer is now completely dry. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in, oops, sorry, we're going to go in and add a few details. Maybe some snow drifts by here. And um, to do snow drifts, just pick up some paint. You just put a straight line across paper, pick up some water. It's going to show us not too much. And then just pull up. Thalo blue is a staining colour. Patter again, dogs and walk about. So, yeah, what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to turn that into a rock. It didn't quite work out as well as I was hoping it would. Um, so, what I'm going to do, turn that bit into a rock, I think. If you need chewing, is my dog has found a treat. <laughs> So what we'll do, let's get another brush, we'll get use this brush, it's a nice brush for painting rocks.
let that bit just dry by there a second. So we've got a rock starting to form here. And what we'll do is we'll go and add some snow into that in a little bit. Um, the next thing we will do is maybe put some, put some more detail trees in. So let's pick up some more paint. So maybe we want to have a, a big tree by here. Yeah, to do gentle tapping motion for trees. Like I say, we're not going to be putting in any colours other than the phthalo blue and then later some of the white gouache. But it's very important that we get in order to create depth in your painting that you that you get like darker tones and lighter tones in so we've got that one there so we'll do so if you're going to put a tree closer than that tree it's going to have to be slightly bigger in order to create some depth in your painting so i'm going to put another tree here so this tree's coming up behind the rock so it has to be bigger than that tree pit up at their little feet again At the moment, it looks like the the moment the trees look like they're a little bit one dimensional. But what we'll do is once we go in with our gouache, we'll make it look a little bit like this. They're a bit more three D. Well, not necessarily three D, but not so front on perspective. But these these really don't have to be perfect. This is a very, very expressive expressive painting. So I'm gonna add a few more by here. A few more. Do this one a bit. Because I'm going to start this one about here, so it means it has to be smaller than this tree. So, so that's going to be roughly our stem. That means it gives the, the picture a bit more perspective and a bit more depth because you're looking at it as... Because you can see that this tree then is further away. Again, like I said, this does not have to, it's not perfect. You really don't need to, because we'll be adding bits in when we're going to do our, with our white gouache. Let's pick up a bit more paint. Let's put that there. So I think I'm gonna do another tree here. Um, do it slightly smaller, but not much smaller than this one. So maybe if I start about there, yeah. These are almost silhouettes of trees. Mm. 
and the branches come down. Um, because with um, composition, what you kind of want is a, always an odd number of um, details to look at. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put in a really small tree here. So it means that we've got five. So we've got five trees in in focus, but obviously different sizes, so it creates a bit more depth in your painting. Um, I think I'm going to put here is some, maybe some grass by here. So in order to, I want them to be different, make sure you're doing grass, make sure it's in different, different, make sure you put the brush in different directions. Grass does not grow one way and it doesn't necessarily grow straight up. I'm going to put a few more bits up here. Mm -hmm. Actually, we've got enough paint. So here we've got our rock. So what we could do is some little blades coming out by here. Pitter patter, pitter patter. Really don't like um, locking my dog away to do painting tutorials. So she's literally just wandering around the house aimlessly waiting for me to finish. <laughs> so, so we've got very grass sticking out there. We're going to put a little bit of blaze sticking out here and everywhere. Right. Dog's trying now to climb on my lap. <laughs> so, so what we're going to do now is let these bits potentially dry and, and then we'll come in and add some highlights. And before we had the highlights, I just decided that maybe what we could do is put a few more bits of Maybe just a few bits of grass here where we've got and there she goes again. Where we've got these little just to get to give it a little bit of perspective. Adds some dimensions to it. So we'll while them bits are drying, I'm gonna get our designer, Windsor and Newton designer white gouache to add in highlights in different areas of the painting. Let's move out of the way. only add a tiny bit of water to gouache because the more water you add the less opacity it has so what I'm going in here is as you can see I'm kind of going from the center and moving out that will represent branches that are front facing on from the tree as well as going on the ones at the side. As you can see, this is giving our painting a whole new, new perspective. more 
water because it's a bit dry. Oh, if you could see my dog now, it's so funny. She's a bit fed up of waiting for me, I think, to finish. As you can just hear, she's pit pattering away. She's trying to look out the window. <laughs> and now she's given up the ghost and left the room. <laughs> Bless her. Won't be long now and I'll be able to take her out for a little walk. Well, hopefully. Put some snow here. And then the bottoms of the trees. Because obviously we can't see shadows and things, so. Oh, she's gone upstairs. <laughs> what damage she's going to cause up there. <laughs> this is probably the most time consuming part of this whole painting. Putting in these highlights. Snow. Hmm. She's definitely up to something. Not quite sure what it is. Let me know in the comments if you've got any pets and how you're coping. You know, if they're animals like dogs, you know, that need to be walked and stuff, how you're coping with the lockdown. Um, I'm actually somebody that's classed as high risk and so is advised not to go out um, so I if I do take when I do take her out it's literally for a very quick walk around the block You can see the painting really starting to come alive now. Nearly finished this bit. So I'm just going to put some highlights here in the grass, I think, because you know, the grass gets snow on it too. And then we'll go on to the furnace bit. Yeah, sticking out. So we're going to go ahead and put a little bit on this bit here where I messed up. So get a big brush. Off. Pick up some wash. So 
sur un œil. Look at the top of the rock. Like I said, this does not need to be perfect. It certainly, my painting certainly isn't, but can add a few details by putting some lines in as if it's been a crack or next bit we can do is actually pick up some phthalo blue go in and darken up certain areas and i'm mixing a bit with the wash but that's fine just gives the illusion of And put a darker outline here. Bit of a shadow. Right, now this is the fun part. We're going to, do, we're going to create some snow. I'm just going to pick up some gouache on one of these really stiff brushes. This is the only thing I think these brushes are really good for. If you just put Put a brush and being a splatter. I don't know if you can see, we've got snow. Put a bit more gouache down, I think, for this bit. So this is a bit thick. No, that's better. Oh, she can see something. She's off. So we've got a lovely snowy winter scene. I hope it was super easy for you to follow along with and um, really hope you've enjoyed doing this along with me and please let me know in the comments how you got on whether whether you enjoyed the video and like and subscribe if you're able to just go in and remove our tape. You need to be very careful doing this because it can tear your paper. If you are concerned about that, recommend using your hair dryer on it before removing it. Oopsie, oh, it's damaged a bit there. So that's our finished painting. Remember to sign your initials in the corner. Thank you.